Hello. There is no doubt what the topic of Paul's prayer is. In his opener to the second letter, he writes to the church in Corinth. The word comfort appears in one form or another, no less than nine times in this prayer. So what is it exactly that Paul is praying for? The clue is in the title of this prayer. Praise to the God of all comfort. The word comfort literally means with, come, and strength or courage from fort or fortis. The Latin word fortis meaning brave. And why is comfort the topic of Paul's prayer? The church in Corinth was a newly established but church but was suffering from outside influences and temptations. In his first letter Paul had written to the people in the church at Corinth quite severely about specific issues such as marriage and morality. He then learned that false teachers had visited after this letter had been sent and were undermining his teaching. Other idols were being worshipped. Immoral living was still endemic. Followers of the Christian life struggled with their new lifestyle and faith and suffered criticism and even persecution. A Paul appears to be practising what he is preaching. He has compassion for the people of Corinth and writes to bring them comfort and to encourage them to comfort one another. And what authority does Paul have to bring this prayer? In the opening verses to 2 Corinthians, Paul gives his credentials. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. He is more than qualified to speak with authority, despite the efforts of those false teachers who were twisting the truth. What were these qualifications that Paul had for writing about the need for comfort? Paul, in a previous um, previous life, had not only been a zealous persecutor of Christians, and so was witness to the severe discomfort meted out by him, along with others, to followers of Jesus. But he was now not only a follower, but also a teacher and preacher himself, and so was on the receiving end of real suffering. He and Silas had been imprisoned in Philippi in a heavily do, uh, dingy dungeon in chains before their miraculous release by the hand of God. Sport, Paul had often spoken of, of a thorn in his side, reference perhaps to some physical affliction that caused him pain and suffering, but which did not impede his ministry. He was also aware of false teachers speaking against him and undermining him. He had had his fair share of struggles since committing his life to in service to Christ. Paul writes from a position not just of sympathy for his readers, rather from a position of empathy. He doesn't just feel sorry for them. He has personally experienced situations similar to what they are probably facing. So if this is a prayer for comfort, why is it entitled a praise God, praise to the God of all comfort? What is there to praise God about in suffering? Well, the answer lies in the title Paul uses for God. The Father of compassion and God of all comfort. God, our Father, is a God of compassion. God's not some distant deity who feels sorry for us when we're struggling or suffering. He is there with us in our difficulties. He himself suffered terribly when Jesus, his son, the suffering servant, endured humiliation, torture and pain and died a criminal's death on a cross for our sakes. 
The word compassion means to suffer together. And again, notice that word com, meaning with, and passion from the Latin word pati, meaning suffering. The connection of suffering together with another person moves us beyond sympathy, beyond just feeling sorry for someone, into the realm of empathy, knowing from past personal experience what struggles are being faced. Praising God acknowledges that he alone is the source of all comfort because he has a deeper compassion than any of us will ever know. This is a starting point for us. God has compassion and so gives us comfort. Compassion is that feeling that arises within us when we are confronted with someone else's suffering and then we feel moved to relieve that suffering. God sees our suffering and as a result offers us comfort. So what does that offer of comfort mean to us? There will be times in all our lives when we struggle. It's a fact of life. However, knowing and rejoicing in a God of compassion helps us to endure that suffering and thus receive the divine comfort of our compassionate Father. Endurance is another theme that Paul often writes about, using his own personal experiences as an example. Endurance is not some grim, bleak acceptance of our struggles. Rather, it's a facing up to our difficulties and hopefully triumphing over them. This does not mean that all our struggles and difficulties will disappear. Our Father of Compassion is moved to respond. He gives us comfort by standing alongside us, giving us strength to face our difficulties, encouragement and hope to deal with our troubles. When we have received God's comfort, that strength, that encouragement, that Father, that hope from our Father of compassion, then what is our response? Over my 30 plus years as a GP, I was privileged to be with people as they reached the end of their life and to support them and their grieving families. However, it wasn't until I witnessed the death of my own mother some 12 years into my time as a GP that I was able to fully understand the emotional pain of watching someone you love die. Beforehand, I, I could explain the physical processes, what was likely to happen. I could speak about the likely emotional response. I could show sympathy. But it was only after that time that I could truly say, I know what you're going through. At the time of my mother's illness, she and our whole family were aware of the father of compassion looking over her. It didn't diminish her suffering in the physical sense. Hopefully the medication and the drugs did that. However, it gave her and us a sense of real peace and increased her ability to face the ongoing struggle until that time that we knew was all too near when she departed this earth to be in glory with her heavenly father. Thinking about it now, even in those times of pain and suffering, my mother gained comfort from her father of compassion and was given strength to share that comfort with us as we sat at her bedside, dreading the time when she would no longer be with us. Paul tells his readers that having received comfort from God in our own struggles, we are then given the power to comfort others. Going back to the word comfort, meaning with strength, you can see that it's more than sympathy, more than just consoling someone. It's more than an emotion or a passive feeling. It has an active meaning 
meeting people where they are, encouraging them, strengthening them. It's a way of giving someone new hope, a new way forward, a new way of seeing new possibilities. And where does all this come from? It comes from the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort. So when you face life struggles, remember God is compassion. He suffers with you. Gain comfort from him. He meets you where you are and helps you endure those difficulties so that you can be strengthened and receive new hope and see new possibilities. And when you receive that comfort that God offers you, share it so that others can gain the comfort that God has given you. Let us pray. Father of compassion, we so often feel we have to face life's struggles alone. Help us to see that you are there with us and help us to receive the comfort that brings strength and new hope. Thank you that whatever we are going through, you are there suffering with us, but also you are there strengthening and encouraging us. Father of all mercies, God of all comfort, we thank you. Amen. <laughs>